This is the oldest fish cannery still in operation in the world. Ramirez packs 60 million cans of fish a year, from tuna and mackerel to sardines, its biggest seller and a staple here in Portugal. There were once 400 canneries like this one, packing sardines up and down Portugal's coast. Maybe 80% or more that went away, and today we have, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 companies in Portugal. That's Manuel. His great-great-grandfather started the company nearly 200 years ago. And the staff also spans generations. I work here for 30 years. This is Cristina, my daughter. But keeping Ramiro's going hasn't been easy. It's faced a revolution and declining fish populations. So how has it survived? And how does the company plan to keep going? We went to Portugal for a closer look into the big business of canned fish. Ramiro's hauls in its catch from private fishermen in the bustling Matoginos harbor. Começamos a comprar sardinha in junho, julho. But with warming ocean temperatures, sardine populations have dropped by more than 80 percent. It got so bad that in 2004, regulators banned fishing during the spring spawning season. In the years that followed, the government shortened the entire fishing season to just six months and set a fishing quota. Last year, fishermen caught only 30,000 tons. Compare that to the 1980s, when they hauled in over 100,000 tons a year. It's caused recent sardine prices to double. During the season, the fish arrive fresh at the factory and go directly to get cleaned. We know that the, the good quality of sardine, for example, is the summertime. And, and during this time, we, we intensify the activity to do uh, as much as possible. But to keep producing year-round when fishing's banned, Ramirez introduced this freezing system in 2015. First, the fish go into a brine for 30 minutes, and then into the freezer, held at about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Fatima's in charge of quality control and food safety. E se tivéssemos só sardinha, teríamos capacidade para cerca de 200 mil toneladas de, de sardinha. They'll remain in the freezer for up to six months, but Fatima says it doesn't affect the fish much because sardines are naturally so fatty. At 4 p.m., workers pull the fish out of the freezer so they can defrost overnight. Cerca das sete da manhã, as primeiras pessoas a, a chegar retiram as paletes. The sardinha. From here on out, the defrosted fish go through the same machines as the fresh ones. It removes the head and cuts off the tail. We have to have sardinhas grandes, bem gordas, para que a, a, a camisa saia de forma uh, fácil, sem estragar a sardinha. This used to all be done by hand, but this machine has tripled the speed of guts removal. Mas pelo menos uma vez por dia vem uma empresa que retira tudo o que é que, tão, que são as vistas as cabeças para fazer uh, comida para animal. But some of the products like the fillets are too delicate for the machines. Workers on these specialty lines still hand cut them using century old techniques. Depois as senhoras vão pondo dentro das das latas. Once packed, they add on a lid and group them into batches. E depois sim, vão para o cozedor. They get cooked for 30 minutes, first in hot steam and then dry heat. Once done, the workers add in other natural ingredients, like spicy sauce, peppers, or carrots. Next, the cans get weighed. Then this machine splashes in a bit of either water, tomato sauce, or olive oil. Depois entra numa, numa máquina que se chama cravadeira, leva ao tempo e é fechada. The cans drop into baskets in this pool of recycled rainwater. Workers then push the cans into this sterilizing machine to kill off any bacteria on the outside. In theory, one can of fish could last for more than a decade. It was actually a French guy who invented canning in the early 1800s, when Napoleon put out a call for a way to feed his army. And the method took off in popularity. With its long stretch of coastline and abundance of fish, Portugal was primed to get in on the market. And in 1853, Manuel's great-great-grandfather opened the world's first fish cannery in Villa Real de Santo Antonio. By the 1920s, there were hundreds of competing factories along the coast. And during World War II, there was room for all of them. 
Portugal was neutral, so it exported cans to both sides. Some cans were found at the bunker of uh, Hitler. Some of them were Portuguese and were from, from uh, our company. And in 1940, the founder's grandson opened up a new factory, where it is now, in Montaginhos. By then, the sardine had become a cultural icon. But after World War II, the industry started declining. We were the revolution in 19, 1974. And lots of companies had no freezing area. They had uh, tough times, of course, so no frozen possibilities. Climate change and overfishing were also big contributors to the decline. By 2013, there were only 20 canneries left. So how did Ramirez stay afloat? First, because of its loyal staff, spanning generations. Ramirez runs an on-site daycare, and many of its current employees graduated from it. I work here for 30 years. This is Cristina, my daughter. I have three years of age when I came to the creche. My father is in the part of the maintenance, and my husband is also in the part of the maintenance. The day I have children, I will bring them to the creche because it is more valuable. The second reason? A very special taste for innovation. The original cans opened with a key and were often made of tin, which rusted more easily. So Manuel's grandfather switched to aluminum cans in the 70s. We developed together with, uh, with our uh, can supplier, easy open way of uh, opening a can of sardines or tuna. Along with the freezing system, fish cutting and seaming machines, Ramirez also added this finishing line. O primeiro é a colocação de injeto, o do lote, da validade e da, e da identificação do próprio produtor. Depois sim, passa por uma máquina de raio-x, no sentido de ver se tem corpos estranhos. Quality Lab pulls nearly 100 sample cans throughout the day. They test for pH levels and check that seaming and sterilization were done right. Há muitas mais máquinas, há linhas robóticas novas, and they have more space to work too. All these machines have tripled the company's production speed, from 100,000 cans every day in 2015 to 300,000 cans per day now. Finally, to stay competitive when sardine populations dropped, Ramirez added new products, tuna salad, mackerel, salmon, and codfish. So this difficulty became you know, an opportunity to, to do other very interesting products. Today, the company sells 70 different products and has introduced an online shopping platform. We export almost to 50 countries, spread it all over the world. E depois tem sempre aquela três características: é, de é pronto a comer, tem uma validade muito grande, é fácil de transportar. While sardine populations could fall again, Manuel doesn't seem worried. You have been here for almost two centuries, so I think we will overcome.